Mystery Slam podcast from ActiveMystery.ca. Here's your host, Sean Graham. Thank you, Adam, and welcome to the History Slam, everybody. I am Sean Graham, coming at you today nearly live from Ottawa, Ontario, a city which has one of the top-ranked airports in all of North America, if not the world, which is a nice little feather in the cap of the nation's capital. But for somebody like me, it doesn't really do that much because I really don't like to fly. And, and if you remember our Congress recap podcast we did a couple months ago, I believe it came up on several occasions how I don't really like to fly and how having the conference in Victoria was somewhat problematic for me in that having to confront two cross-country flights in the course of four or five days was really going to be problematic. So what I decided to do was once the conference was over, I took a ferry from Victoria to Seattle to see a baseball game and then took a train from Seattle to Vancouver and hopped on the cross-country train from Vancouver to Toronto. And as we traveled, I met some really terrific people, all of whom had different reasons for taking the train and, and had different opinions on train travel and, and the meaning of train travel and, and really the historical significance of the train in Canada. So as we went west to east, decided to talk to some of these folks on the podcast about the meaning of the train and the historical significance of train travel in Canada. First up, we are somewhere between Jasper and Edmonton, closer to Edmonton, about an hour, 40 away. hour out now. Yeah. And we're here with Robin Lambert, originally from Powell River, BC, now living in Red Deer, Alberta. Visual artist, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Why are you traveling today? I am returning home after uh, actually meeting my father on the train. He lives in Switzerland, and he flew to Montreal, took a train across the country, and an uh, easy way for me to meet him was come up to Edmonton, get the train out, hang out with him for a couple of days, and then catch the train back. Very nice. And so you're in Vancouver a couple of days, and now now returning home, heading back, and yeah. you're traveling with your girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah, who's yeah. so the two of you, and what sort of accommodations do you have? Uh, this is the first time I've ever stayed in a train cabin. So we're okay, staying in so cabin. in the cabin. Yeah. Oh wow. How'd yeah. you come out? Uh, we came out in uh, one of the sleeper bunks. Oh, in the, the berths? Yeah, yeah berth. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 So which did you prefer? Uh, we were actually talking about that today. We think the berth is perfectly fine yeah. uh, for the money difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Except for the outlet. I don't get an outlet. I'm in a burst. That's, I don't get an outlet. That is the one Which big difference. Yeah, yeah. you got to, like, uh, poach it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. actually used, on the way out from the berth, we used uh, the one in the bathroom to charge my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I used the one in the middle of the hall to charge my uh, battery on my camera today. Right, yeah. I did yeah, you got to poach, yeah. 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 But, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. if it's only the berth people who are using them, yeah. then so what? Yeah. And there's... What's the difference? You know, you, you recognize everyone right away. So yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's no, st- like, we haven't stopped since Jasper, so no right. one's, <laughs> someone's going to steal something. I mean, it's no. going to be on the train, so yeah. you're good. So you're a visual artist. Yeah. And you say, you you mentioned that you draw a lot on history. Yeah. A little bit for some of your work. So because the train has such a, a unique place in, in Canada's history, how do you, how would you situate the train and is there a way that it could influence what you do? Uh, well, I think one of the things I, I work with is a lot with community, different interactions with people and things like that. I think the train, I mean, there's the mythology of the train in Canada and how it brought us together as a people, coast yeah. to coast and all, all that sorts of stuff, all that sort of stuff. And now that I'm just being on the train, you see how everyone's just kind of hanging out together and talking. Yeah. So for me, uh, I haven't been able to stop thinking about what sort of projects I could do if I was mm. to take the train again, like the next time, what I could maybe sneak in and do a do a project. I don't know exactly what it would be yet, but there's some definite uh, possibilities with the community that happens just with people traveling. And yeah. it's a different sort of travel than any, like the plane, you might get to know the person right beside you, but the train, you're up and you get seated with different people for yeah. dinner and you're playing cards with people and especially yeah. if you're on for three or four days yeah you're gonna get to yeah. know your neighbors yeah well and especially with a plane i mean people seem to be just annoyed on planes yeah yeah you just know? earphones on don't yeah. talk to me please stop yeah. kicking my chair yeah yeah and you can't do that for three days <laughs> no no you know, no you, you can do it for five or six hours but yeah. you can't yeah you can't do it for three days so what what has been the highlight for you either going out coming back a uh, favorite favorite part of the trip Actually, what happened was uh, we, uh, my girlfriend and I got to uh, the, the train station in Edmonton, and we had our boarding pass and everything like that. We were sitting down waiting for the train to come, and the, the guy called out, is, is Robin Lambert here? Is Robin Lambert here? I said, yeah, that's me. He's like, you've been upgraded. 
We oh. were actually gonna we were actually gonna stay in uh, economy on the way out oh, here. Oh wow! And uh, found out my my dad found out he was on the train. We're gonna meet him on the train. He found out that uh, we wouldn't be able to have supper together. <laughs> <laughs> so he talked to one of the service managers and got us upgraded. So the, the kind of highlight was us coming there, kind of expecting we're going to be sleeping overnight in a, in a chair. Yeah. And uh, we got upgraded. And then, of course, in Edmonton, we had the reunion. I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we got to... Uh, and then just kind of hanging out with uh, uh, my dad and his wife and my girlfriend. My, they had never met my girlfriend. So oh, okay. the whole way out was kind of like... Yeah. Here's 27 hours. Get to know your yeah uh, yeah. Get to know my parents. Yeah, yeah that could be a little intimidating. <laughs> it was a little for, for her. Yeah. yeah, it was a little yeah. yeah. But it all turned out good in the end. So yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. I think that was just the highlight, which is kind of that whole like meeting and yeah. having fun. Yeah, yeah. and the now you you live in Red Deer, so yeah. Obviously, the the scenery might not be as unique mm-hmm. to you as it would be to someone like me living in Ottawa. But yeah. what do you think of that part of the trip? Well, last summer I drove through. I drove to uh, Horsefly, BC, from from Red Deer for a family reunion, and uh, that was okay. But the thing is, you're driving and you're focused yeah. the whole time. You go over a gorge, you go over a bridge. Uh, you gotta gotta keep your eye on the road. Yeah. Train, it's just all get up, stand, look around. It's it's a completely different. It's the best way to see the Rockies, really. Right. I think. Yeah. Unless you're camping in them, but if you're gonna travel through them, it's the best way. It's very relaxing. Like yeah. It's, it's yeah. And, and at least for me too I mean like I said I've done this trip from Saskatoon to Toronto before yeah. but I've never done the Rockies part I mean it's stunning yeah it really is yeah it's some of the, the and, and it's parts that you wouldn't get to any other way yeah, yeah. right the, the way that the track is set up like you can't drive there and no you don't see houses there's like yeah. it's like the only way that you can see some of these places this is I think the sixth time I've gone over the Rockies yeah uh, twice from Toronto all the way to Vancouver and a few other times just from Alberta back and forth and each time it's it's different. Yeah. Uh, like sometimes you see Mount Robson, sometimes you don't. Right. Uh, if you go in the winter, it's frozen waterfalls, which yeah. are just as magic, if not more. Yeah. Than, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it was the Pyramid Falls that we passed. That's pyramid the one falls, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah they it slowed, was pretty they cool, up. but yeah. yeah. If that was frozen, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would be crazy to see. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's uh, it really is a, a cool trip, and, and like you say, the community part of it is, is yeah. really nice too. And I've done this, I think, like most of the times I've done this is with family. So yeah. you're talking about the history of the. For me, the train has always been about family. It's kind of what I did yeah. with, with my mostly with my dad. So it's always been kind of like a family experience, but also like get to know Canada experience. Right. Um, so yeah. 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 And it's, it's cool too, like the history part of it. You see like the tunnels through the mountain. Yes. And yeah. remembering how those were made and sort of what that means and everything. Yeah. And, and this, you know, just the difficulties associated with that. Yeah. And there's all sorts of significance to that. It's really, it's a yeah. remarkable story. So. Well, and the massive push to get it done, kind of almost no matter what, so yeah. we could get that transcontinent, so we could hold the country together. Yeah. In a way, so yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. so go ahead, pr- promote yourself and, and right. what you do as, as an artist, and I'm and a send people your way. Okay, my name is Robin Lambert. I'm a visual artist from Red Deer, Alberta, and you can check out my stuff at robinlambert.ca. There you go. And also, if you're going to Red Deer College, yeah, I teach at Red Deer College, check and your uh, I got a few pieces up uh, this summer all over Red Deer. So. Very nice. Yeah. Terrific. Thanks for doing this. Thanks a lot. And now we are somewhere in between Winnipeg and Saskatoon. I, th- I think we're in Manitoba right now, <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure. And uh, we're here with Joshua Smith. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. So what you're doing is actually kind of cool because you're here playing music. I am. Yeah. I'm uh, t- traveling across Canada uh, with Via Rail and performing along the way and... Uh, playing music for my meals <laughs> yeah it says it's an interesting system that they have set up and, and it's, it was called tracks for tracks yes and you submit basically an audition tape and you get to ride the rails play music and, and see the country yeah it's a beautiful way for uh, independent artists to get across the giant place that is canada uh for free basically and yeah you get to meet new people and share your music and uh yeah it's really great and where are you going I my end trip is uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, my hometown. So uh, I'm living in Kelowna, BC, right now. But uh, I was born and raised in Halifax. So. Okay, so you're doing, and you got on in Vancouver because you were introduced to those of us who got on in Vancouver uh, on the patio. Yeah, and you just started to play and said, "I'm Josh. I'm going to be playing throughout the trip." Yeah. and 
there you go and you started playing and one of the first songs you played was Sweet Baby James yes and when you played that I knew things were going to go well yeah because that's one of my favorite songs yeah um so you're doing Vancouver, Toronto, and then Toronto, Montreal, mm-hmm. Montreal, Halifax, and, yep. the, and you're gonna have to play everywhere. Uh, the Montreal, Toronto train might be tough. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not gonna play on that one. It's just more just kind of like a taxi to Montreal, right. and then Montreal to Halifax. I'll be playing there. So yeah. And how would you describe your style, and, and why do you think it works for this sort of a setting? Uh, I'm very kind of singer-songwriter intimate. Uh, I call my genre East Coast soul folk. So it's kind of, uh, it's very warm and uh, inviting. So it uh, includes people as well. And it's just a very chill atmosphere. So uh, I do have a full band, but it also works really well acoustic as well. So, you know. and, and is there a challenge playing on a train, just like from a actually playing the guitar standpoint? Uh, it's a little bit weird. I feel like have like vertigo or something because I'm just kind of <laughs> falling all over the place but yeah. it's fun like yeah yeah I think it's uh, it's it's like any kind of if you do street busking it's the same kind of thing you know right. you just have to project a bit more but uh, it's okay it's really fun yeah. and, and now for you as, as a musician as a, a sort of a folk musician too I mean is, is there a certain element of the train that you know because there is this history to the train in this country and, and mm-hmm. there's this idea of, of romance and binding the country together and, and does that have any significance to you and, and are you aware of that while you're playing yeah i think there's like a mystique about it i think there's a uh, a mystery to it you know every folk singer needs to ride a train at least once in his life i always <laughs> say but yeah i think there's uh i think it's just the unknown and traveling to new places and uh being a traveling minstrel kind of mindset so it's uh yeah, I'm really excited to do it. I've never done it before, so it's uh, it's uh, charting uncharted territories. So. so are you writing as you go then? You're writing yeah. your train song? Yeah, yeah, I write every day, so I try to write a song every day. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, Ambitious. But, yeah, so I, and I do, I mean, they're not all gems, but it's right. just to get into the discipline of writing, I guess. Right, uh, right. But I do, uh, yeah, hopefully someday I'll have a song about a train. Not yet, but yeah. 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 Now, if you had to sum up sort of this particular trip, the, the cross-country trip, and I know it's your first time, and we're yeah. only barely halfway yes. across the country, but I mean, what to, to you, what does it mean to travel this way across the country? Uh, I think it's, uh, the word pure kind of comes to mind, I really like, uh, just it's organic, it's very raw, like it's, uh, you know, for the most part there's no wireless, so it's you're kind of cut off from a lot of the yeah. checking your phone and which I really emails. like. Yeah, which is nice just to turn everything off. Yeah, and then you're just, you're forced to meet new people and talk to new people and, uh, yeah, I, I really like that and it's, in a, in, in a really fast-paced world, it's nice just to go across, you know, saunter across Canada on a train, yeah. just nice and slow, so yeah, it's and, nice. And so, and what has the reception been so far from some of the other uh, passengers? Uh, great, yeah, people really, uh, really enjoy, uh, have enjoyed my music so it's really good and I'm a personable person too so I like to talk to people as well right. so it's not like the awkward indie emo <laughs> kind of music guy that sits in the corner and doesn't talk to anyone kind of thing so uh, yeah I know I really enjoy building relationships so yeah. and, and what do you think of like the, the, the community it's, it's, it's just weird it's almost like a community is built on the train yeah with the full understanding that once you get off the train, there's a very good chance you're not going to see a lot of these people ever again. Yeah. But it's weird that there's this almost camaraderie yeah. while you're on the train. It's really it's really weird, and, and I don't know, is that helpful to you? In Because, in, I mean, a lot of what a musician does is you have to sort of play to the audience that's there. Yeah. So does that make it easier for you to sort of get in a sense of who these people are and, and why they're traveling? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's... It, right, so far, it just feels like it's kind of like a... I don't know, when you go away to summer camp and you're, just, <laughs> you're stuck with these people for a long period of time and then once they leave, you don't see them again for a long time. So, um, yeah, it's great. And then you get to know each other and get to know each other's journeys. And Yeah, yeah so it's really cool. All right, now, if people want to find out more about you, where do they go? What should uh, they do? www.joshuasmithtunes.com right. And uh, also I'm on iTunes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just doing my Cross Canada Via Rail tour, uh, recording a new album, hopefully coming out in October. Nice. Um, pick up my EP, Songs for Ellie, 
uh, on iTunes yeah. uh, or Bandcamp, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. All so. right. And Ellie is your guitar. Yes, Ellie is my uh, old guitar. So. Yeah, tell the story of the guitar. Um, my guitar, I uh, walked into a, a pawn shop a few years ago and saw Ellie hanging on the wall, and I thought to myself, I thought it looked cool, like, first of all. I was like, oh, this is neat. Um, it was really beat up and uh, pretty old, and... Uh, well, it didn't play that well, but I really liked the tone of it, so um, I thought, well, if I could just bring it to a luthier and have him fix it up and uh, make it sound really great, and uh, so I did, and it's, of course, it sounded amazing, and uh, I was just inspired by the guitar to write uh, an EP worth of songs, so, it, 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 like, through the year, like, the year that I bought it, I was going, I, you know, I went through a lot of loss and stuff in my life, and so that guitar was kind of a nice little gift to myself to inspire me to write more so cool stuff and yeah. you played a, you just played a bunch of the songs from that yeah. uh, album it really good really good sounding and, and really cool I, I, I like I like folk music because it tells a story yeah at the same time so yeah. it, it, was, it was really cool so I, I encourage people to check it out joshuasmith.com yes uh, joshuasmithtunes tunes.com yes alright yeah. terrific thanks a lot for doing this you're very welcome now up next on the show we have Sally and Ed Williford from Brookhaven Mississippi Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, so you're here. Part of this is celebrating your 56th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks. So what made you want to do a cross-country train trip? Because like, I'm wondering, for two folks from Mississippi, uh, you mentioned this is something that you always wanted to do. How, how, does, how do two folks from Mississippi get the idea of wanting to do a cross-country train trip in Canada? I'm not sure. We, I, I went across the United States with my mother 20 years ago or more and enjoyed it. And it, perhaps because we're older, a train trip suits us better so that we're not having to do a lot of planning or expending a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. And we just knew that we would like this. Right. And it's been wonderful. We have a good friend, uh back at home who's a Presbyterian preacher and his hobby with his wife is taking train trips <laughs> so okay. every vacation he'll take a long train trip mm. and he's shared that with groups we've heard and that got us interested also mm. and back at our 25th anniversary between jobs we took an 8 week period and toured Europe as uh, kind of older backpackers okay. and uh, had a good time we had train passes uh, on the continent and uh, uh, through the British Isles and we spent Mm. a little over eight weeks uh, on the train traveling in it where we wanted to. So we had that idea. Mm. And we should say too, because we're heading east right now, you headed west about a week ago? A little more than a week ago? Yes, yes. Our whole trip, well, counting the time from Mississippi and back, driving back, will be almost three weeks. Mm. And because we, you, you went to see your family in Seattle? We went Seattle. to see our son in Seattle and spent about five days with him, and then we were on the train going and coming each four nights and three days. So, And, and we drove from our home uh, up to Toronto. Mm-hmm. And it took us about two days to get there, and we were going to take about... We drove straight up, but going home, we're going to visit relatives and friends, take about four days nice. going home, but uh, we'll get home uh, uh, next Friday, and uh, we'll just have had a great trip. Everything about it's been good. We've had beautiful weather, and uh, every sight we've seen has been fun. We've had a great visit with our son uh, on his birthday, and uh, he took time off and was a good tour guide around Seattle. Mm. Yes, it's you wouldn't expect to have great weather for in the Pacific Northwest no, for that it, long. It yeah. has been perfect. It only rained a little bit today mm. on the train. Yeah, that's the only time we've seen rain. Mm. But also, we will get back just in time on Friday before Father's Day, and also his 80th birthday. Oh wow! Very nice. So oh. every yeah. seven so. years. It's on Father's Day, and yeah. this is the seventh year. On a seventh year of Father's Day and a big birthday, a round numbers, that's <laughs> that's really, that's terrific. Yeah. Um, now, what, this, this is your first trip into Canada, was it? Well, I had been 
on a trip with my daughter up into one of those oh, islands above the San Juan Islands. Mm-hmm. But I had been through Victoria and had been back through Vancouver, but had not spent any time okay. in Canada. No, not really. We but then about 20 years ago, we took a motor trip up through Nova Scotia, oh, right. and uh, mm-hmm. we were interested in Anne of Green Gables, so okay. we went to see her home <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. At, uh, on Prince Edward Island, Yeah, and uh, so that was our uh, the trip into Canada. Okay, and but for this trip, so this is a new part of Canada then that you're seeing, is the East Coast is obviously different from the, the prairies and, and, the, and the West Coast. What were your expectations coming up, uh, you know, when you boarded the train last week in Toronto? Well, I knew that it was going to be three different types of scenery, Uh and I was not looking forward to the plains very much, because the flat area in the Dakotas in America, I thought was pretty boring, (laughs) but this wasn't, because you did see some things, cows and beautiful black earth. Mm-hmm. And some grass growing, and yeah. some houses and barns and things of that sort. Yeah. So it was and not to, and it did have some trees. Yes, which, and there's grain elevators along the way. And, right, there are things yeah. to see. Yeah, and there's nothing so, to block your view. No, <laughs> and and to see all that open space is that's a fun thing. Yeah, you could not believe believe how much water there was. Yes, uh, yeah, everywhere we looked, there was mm. another lake and another yeah. lake and another lake, and mm. uh, that was. Pretty. Then we saw the beautiful waterfalls from the train yeah. and the high mountains, the snow-capped mountains. Mm-hmm. And uh, our son had spent a couple of seasons working on Mount Rainier, okay. and we had driven up there seven, eight years ago and visited him briefly. But uh, while in Seattle, we just had beautiful, clear views of Mount Rainier. We couldn't believe it. In terms of the people, what I, I, mean, I won't tell you about the people okay. before she does. We, we didn't know what to really think about uh, Canadian people. We live in the deep south where people always speak and are friendly and try to be courteous, and that's not true everywhere in the U.S. Mm-hmm. But uh, when we got to Canada, uh, we were on a subway after we left the motel headed to the train station. And it was crowded, and uh, we don't uh, feel so old, but we you can look at us and tell we're older, we're senior citizens. <laughs> we got on the subway. The first thing, a younger man got up and asked me to take his seat. Mm. I didn't want to do it, but, <laughs> just, but he wanted me to. So I did. Mm. Turned around, and a younger lady got up and asked her to take her seat. So mm. we 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 just. We were very surprised at that. Then we were, I was pulling out suitcases, which were on wheels, it wasn't all that bad, into the train station, and a uh, young lady stopped and said, Sir, may I help you with that suitcase? <laughs> we were so impressed. Mm. Every contact we've had with Canadian people has just been a blessing. Mm. And I have felt, I don't know that I expect what I expected. I hadn't really thought about how the Canadian people would be, but to me, they are more like Southern people mm. than I expected. And someone suggested that because it, they're less people, they're more scattered, people are more relaxed, and don't have strict schedules and things, <laughs> which in the South, that's more, people are more relaxed. Right. And I found the Canadians were similar. And that was fun. Did either of you, before you got on the train, have a, had a sense of the history of it to Canada? Because, you know, when it, when it was first built, the idea of a transcontinental railroad, railroad in Canada was part of a wider nation-building product, project in the late 1800s. And, and so there's this, there's this romance of the train for Canadians that's part of, because it's so much a part of our heritage. Was there an awareness on your part of the significance of that? Or was it more for you just seeing the countryside and doing a, a, a trip that, that's something you always wanted to do? No, I think it embarrasses me to think how little I have known about Canadian history, train, or anything else. And I just knew it was going to be a beautiful trip mm-hmm. and a relaxing and pleasant trip. Mm-hmm. But it's it really has been far and a better 
above anything that I thought it would be. The food on the train has been outstanding. The servers have been gone above and beyond what they might have done. And it's just been very, very pleasant. And in visiting with a Canadian man we'd met on the trip, and we were talking about Canada and its resources and population, and he told us that they were only a little over 30 million people yeah. in all of Canada. I cannot believe that. <laughs> only 300 million in the U.S. Yeah. And we talked about government, but how different our governments are, and uh, we, were, we were impressed with hmm. Canada, the size of it. That it's not as nearly as population-wise as big as we thought. Hmm. Yeah. Area-wise, huge. Yeah. Yes. A lot, a lot of space, not a lot of people to fill it. And uh, now as we sit here, we're in Winnipeg, Manitoba right now. There's a little bit of a a layover as the crew changes. And we sit, and I went out and I walked around, and I saw the forks uh, where the Assiniboine and the Red Rivers meet. And uh, they're building the new Canadian Museum of Human Rights, and that's currently under construction, so I saw that. What has been your favorite, if I'm going to twist your arm a little bit, what has been your favorite part, or maybe favorite location that you've seen while you've been here? And We did take a bus tour of Winnipeg on the way over and she'll tell you about that it was, it was so well done and we did learn more about the history of the area uh-huh. and about the story, the real story of Winnie the Pooh yeah. <laughs> and I love that and it that was interesting I think the biggest pleasant surprise kind of was Jasper what mm. a sweet little old town yeah. that is and we had scones and tea there mm. and you know ate lunch and it was that was that was fun mm. seeing yeah. it i think that's a, it's a take your breath away town it I is. think it really it really is mm-hmm. and so when you go back to mississippi when people ask you how was the trip like if, if you had to sum it up in one word like what are you gonna what are you gonna tell all your friends it's just tremendous yeah. we, more we, than one word i'd say better than expected mm. we, there's just nothing negative about it and you can't take a nearly a three week trip and not have some problem so far we have not experienced anything in that nature but and even sleeping in the top bunk was not a bad experience <laughs> well it's nice you get to rock a little bit and it's relaxing it's, it's great so, so I'm, I'm so happy that you've had a good time and congratulations, 56th wedding anniversary, and, and happy birthday on, on Sunday. You will to share your table with us at the train station uh, in Vancouver. That's how we met. That's right, yes. We were sitting there, and, and I had a couple of I was sitting by myself, and he came up, and we started chatting, and uh, it, was, it was a beautiful thing. Well, thank you so much for doing this. That's Sally and Ed Williford from Brookhaven, Mississippi. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Okay, and as we continue to sit here in Winnipeg, waiting to move again, we're joined by Chris Collis from Dorchester, England. Welcome Colleen. to the podcast. <laughs> Collis. <laughs> to offend all of our French Canadians. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for doing this. Thank you very much. So you got on in Vancouver. I did, yeah. With me, and we happened to be sitting across from each other and, yeah. and sleeping five feet <laughs> yeah, above, um, above below, each other, yeah. which is <laughs> yeah. uh, not as awkward as that might sound. No, no, that's all um, so, so, so what are you traveling for? What's the purpose of your trip? I am traveling just for a bit of a break after um, being on tour for six weeks. Um, kind of tack this month of holiday on to the end of a bit of work that I was doing in a band. And as I had no kind of time constraints, I decided to take the train to see a bit more of the country than, um, than fly, which seems m- much more of a direct Mm. route over so uh, yeah the train's been really awesome so far yeah and and what did you expect getting on the train probably something that's kind of similar to the experience actually I did a bit of research about it first so watched um, actually I think they have like a video of of someone like traveling on the train (laughs) like and videoing it from their point of view Uh, so I watched that read a few uh, reviews and stuff and um yeah, it's been pretty pretty similar. Like lots of relaxation time and amazing views and stuff. So it's kind of a bit of like uh, a bit of time to yeah not have any internet and reflect, do some reading, and just have a bit of time um, on your own really, which is nice. Yeah, that um, is nice. Yeah. Like the, the no internet is a big thing. Yeah, I think, I think uh, they should promote it. Yeah, because you don't really get that kind of retreat from 
society I think very much in everyday life like the internet's always there and people are always on their phones and stuff and um, sorry <laughs> yeah and, yeah um, yeah, so as Josh shits on his phone, who we <laughs> talked to earlier on the podcast. It's true. Yeah. So it's nice to be kind of disconnected from all of that and, and meet some other people who you wouldn't necessarily be um, be speaking to. Um, so, like, with the kind of seating arrangement for dining and stuff, mm-hmm. you're, you're kind of seated with people that, like you know, Josh was saying earlier, you, you probably would choose to sit on your own and have dinner rather than right. sit with... Um, with some older people but it's been really interesting to kind of um, be involved in in that kind of thing so mm. yeah it opens you up to some new experiences for sure yeah because well for me too I expected a, a, an older clientele yeah I think um, I was surprised as many young people are here yeah yeah and yeah I expected a lot of kind of people doing this for the journey um, didn't expect to see very many people who are travelling on their own but there seem to be quite a few yeah. who are taking this as um, alternative um travel than flying and stuff mm. and, and wanting a bit more um, time to like reflect and not just get there and do right. some other stuff like you know take some days off to, to enjoy enjoy mm. the actual process of, of getting somewhere new so. in Britain and I think in Europe in general mm. I think the train is seen differently from the way it is seen here yeah so, so I'm just wondering how the experience on a train in Canada would differ from a European train. Okay, so in England specifically, the train is seen as just a way of getting to work, I suppose, and back home as quick as possible uh-huh. um, without talking to anyone at all. And so you will sit on your own. You are like, going to go to sleep, or you're going to you're going to do something else, read a book, or like be non-engaging with anyone else. Here, it's very much more open. Like people are interested in like speaking to you and like finding out about you and things Europe might be slightly different I think the infrastructure for rail is a lot better people kind of use it for commuting and and for getting around a bit more England is is not great um, so yeah you will you will be surrounded by people who who are very unhappy and want to get home as quick as possible without any kind of speaking to anyone else so this is like the opposite of that. Yeah. Well, in, in all fairness, you will the train because you're going to Montreal. Yeah. The train between Toronto and Montreal, you will get some of that. Uh, okay. Like, <laughs> oh, I see. You will. You'll get some biz- more business travelers because yeah. this is more of just a leisure. Train yeah, for sure. Yeah. Than a vacation train. Yeah. Um, you'll get some of that on, on the train, and and the trains in and around Toronto, commuter trains, mm. you, you'll get that. And, okay. Um, that's what I'm going to take home when I get to Toronto, and I will go into my bubble and I'll put my earphones yeah, in, and I won't talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. I'll fit in. I'll that's fit in nicely. A, well, this is certainly a nice escape from that. Yeah. So it's very different for me, like. The way that I take trains at home, um, you people kind of seem to get uh, freaked out if you like look at them or smile at them, like trying mm. to be friendly and stuff, and start a conversation. They will be like, "Whoa, this guy's mental! Like, why is he? Why is he trying to start a conversation?" Kind of thing. But here, yeah, it's everyone has time and um, very friendly and stuff. So mm. yeah, it's very different. Now, when you got on the train in Vancouver, mm-hmm. how aware were you, if at all, of its significance in? Canadian history uh, as, a, as a nation building device if at all I was slightly aware but purely from computer games oh so I used to play a computer game a long time ago when I was young which was basically about building a rail network from uh, one side of Canada and America to the other okay uh, and from that actually was quite a good learning device about the history of the railroad and stuff but other than that, I had no understanding until I saw um, half of the film that they showed today, which was um, about the rail network in the nineteen uh, in the nineteen fifties. Yeah, um, which was pretty good. So. Yeah, that was interesting. I saw part of that. It was an interesting. I, th- I thought it was interesting that they were showing it because yeah. it was like a promotional film from yeah. the nineteen fifties. Yeah, exactly. So it was, it was kind of uh, yeah, yeah. It was interesting, but it was nice to see. Like, it was nice to see it from that perspective for sure. Yeah. And do you, any highlights so far of, of stuff you've seen? Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's going to say, but like going through the Rockies was um, was a highlight, obviously, um, just because we don't have anything like that in England, really, where you can be that close to mountains and mm. rivers and forests and things, and actually be travelling through it uh, at a pace where you can actually take in, um, you know, the surroundings and have time to reflect on 
on kind of like bigger bigger things I suppose um, yeah it's been very good and do you think that being able to because like you said I mean if you were to fly you, you I mean you can see the mountains from a plane I mean they're mountains but yeah um, I, I don't, don't no you don't get the same sense of being actually immersed in that environment I think flying is fine you're like oh that's cool we're flying over some mountains kind of thing and not think anything more of it mm-hmm. but when you're actually like on the side of the mountain and spending days going through it yeah. it makes you feel um, a lot more humble as to the size of the country and kind of the vastness of these of these things really mm-hmm. um, and you get to see sort of the diversity of, of the landscape yeah for sure as well cause like going, going from the mountains to the plains and yeah. things and um, there's nothing you really think about when you're yeah just thinking about Canada that there's this diversity of landscape um, across the whole country so it's been very interesting yeah to to take the train this way so. mm. um. now you mentioned you're, you're, tour- you're touring with your band yeah the band is called TTNG that's right yeah. what, what sort of music it's classed as math rock which is kind of a niche <laughs> a, li- a little niche <laughs> thing that not many people have heard of I kind of just call it an indie band um, right so it's just kind of like guitar, bass, drums, but we use like different time signatures and things. So yeah, not many kind of four beats to a bar thing. It's a bit more, a bit more diverse. All right, if people want to find you. Where do they do that? Uh, they can yeah, just type it into Google or Facebook or anything like that. So it's all. Right. Um, it's and T T N G is the actual letter. It's just yeah, that's TTNG. right. Just the just the letters. Yeah. yeah. All right. Terrific, I appreciate it. Nicole, cool. thank you very much. All right, Chris Collis Thanks. from Dorchester, England, on the train here in thank Winnipeg. You. Thanks. So now we, as we sit here waiting to move again somewhere in, in northern Ontario, northwestern Ontario, I have no idea exactly where we are. We were talking with Gay Casey from Darwin yes. in Australia. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. I just love train journeys sort of thing. Since I was a small child, when we used to go on holidays down south doing like Sydney to Melbourne, Melbourne to Adelaide and coming up through the centre on the old GAN sort of thing, which is a famous train. Mm. And I have and done the Trans-Siberian one as well, yeah, from yeah. St. Petersburg through to Beijing. And I wanted to see Canada, and to me it just made sense to take the train trip across. Mm. And I've been more, more than impressed. With it is the most loveliest train I've been on a long trip, <laughs> having mm. been on them in Vietnam and <laughs> China, <laughs> which is mm. not... No, you have a lot to be desired, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, and I never expect the food to be the high standard mm. that it is. So much, yeah. And you come from, uh, you, you did an Alaskan cruise before. I right? came into Vancouver, had three days in Vancouver, did what they call the inside seven day passage up to Anchorage, and a seven day tour through Alaska, Fairbanks, and Denali Park, then back to Van- flew back to Vancouver and got on the train. Yes. Mm. I have two days in Toronto, three in Montreal, four in New York, and home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and if I twisted your arm and say a highlight of the trip, what would you pick? I'd probably pick the food because I never thought it'd be that <laughs> as much or as such a high standard. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. On your train. Right? On the train. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I know I read about it and planned on it, and then I've put it aside. And I'd forgotten that we even were getting meals provided, sort mm. of thing, and I just thought it'd be one or two things that's in small so take it or leave it yeah. uh, and and you know because the train has this you know this this it, it's an important part of Canada just in the history of the country mm-hmm. binding it together as an Australian riding it and, and is, is there maybe a similar story in Australia of how the trains relate to the culture in general uh, in the founding of the country no probably more our trains were to get from a big city to a big city or they were put up during the war years World War II you know, to get the troops up and down and around about sort of thing hmm. yeah, they are talking in Australia doing high speed trains but we haven't done it yes. hmm. so for you this is uh, this is more of just for the sights and, and a way and to see the country the experience of the train yes, yes. Hmm. I don't like flying but it's hmm. a quick method to get from point A to point B hmm. and that and I prefer trains to coaches, yes. Right. Yeah. And, and has this been something you'd wa- you've wanted to do for a long time? I think, yes, it was. I had to build on I just sort of thought, I want to go up the inside passage, go to Alaska, cross Canada by train, have a look at New York, go home now. Mm. 
I've got to sit down and work all this out. As vague as that is. Yes, the, yeah. the logistics are yes. the hard part. Yeah. Wanting to do it, I mean, it's, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, wanting to do yeah. it. And there's the good old internet, so that was excellent. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's really good yeah, to no. help plan. So when you go home and people ask you about this, it's particularly the train part, what, what, how are you going to describe it in, in like a sentence? How, how are you going to sum it up for folks? I was going to say it was wonderful and comfortable, great scenery, excellent food, and a comfortable bed sort of thing. Yeah, mm. Very comfortable bed, yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much. All right, and as we are now moving again <laughs> here in northern Ontario with Lillian Cargill from Capriol, Ontario. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so you, you have an interesting story because not only are you here riding the train, but but you your family has had a long connection with the railroad. That's uh, right. Just uh, you just want to describe uh, what that connection yeah. has been. Well, my husband came over from Scotland, and uh, he was looking for a job, and he was driving, and he stopped and went into a home, and uh, it was a home of one of the bosses from CN he didn't know that and while he was there the gentleman said oh you're looking for a job he said oh he said well we need people on the CN and he said oh I never thought in that he said alright he said uh, the thing is I've got two other chums that are with me can they get a job too and he said yes but you have to go to Toronto and set exams so <laughs> He said, oh, no no trouble. So anyway, that's how he became on the CN, yeah. you know. And then, of course, we were uh, married in Scotland, but I came to Canada. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll live in Canada then. Because we were trying to make up our mind. Anyway, I did come and he said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, that's okay. You're working for CN now. That's good. And when was that? That was in 1956. Okay. Right. So, so just after these been, cars were built. We've been here ever since. Yeah. And uh, he started in Barry. That's where he was working. And then we had to move to, where did he move? Oh, Horn Payne. We were 11, <laughs> 11 years in Horn Payne. Okay. And then by that time we had a family. And then we moved down to Capriol. Some people call it Capriol, and I, I didn't know how to pronounce it because one person told me Capriol and another told me Capriol. <laughs> so I, I stuck with Capriol. Yeah. <laughs> so, Whatever works, right? You know, yeah. So then the problem was I have two daughters and two sons, and they decided they wanted to, my sons wanted to do what their dad done. They wanted to be engineers on the CN. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't get them to go to college or anything like that. They got a job with the CN. So my oldest son still works for the CN. My other son now works down in Toronto, but he's not with the CN now. He did. He went to Edmonton and worked there, but he was getting laid off all the time. And he came home and decided, I have to look for another job. So he's ended up, he's down in Toronto somewhere. My daughter also worked for CN. Both of them. Right. They they both worked in Capriol in the, the head office. They worked there. And then uh, when they got married, then they split up. And one of them, she quit altogether, Donna Lynn. But Shauna, she went out. She uh, worked away and then she went out to Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg. oh yeah. Yeah, she moved to Winnipeg. And then she transferred to Edmonton. And this is her. This week, she'll be retiring right, on yes. Tuesday. Which is okay? tomorrow. Yeah. Right, that's right. Yeah. So, given that your family has had this really strong connection with the railroad, mm-hmm. you know, how, how, what, would, what does it mean to you to be riding this train? I love the train. I enjoy it. Anytime we've came on the trains here, we found uh, everybody was really nice. It was, it was a good way to go for a little change and a holiday we find people were so nice on the train and we enjoy it and, and, and I've been looking forward to coming back again my husband and I were going to come but it ends up that I had decided to come myself because my husband is no longer here okay um, 
And last question. Um, living in communities like Cape Real and Horn Payne, which are very much railroad communities. I loved it. Yeah. I loved Horn Payne. I didn't even want to move out of there. It was like one big family. Everybody was so nice. I'm not kidding you. And, uh, you know, there was other people living there, and we used to go to the dump and dump stuff, the young Indian people, and they were so glad. Oh, you, you don't need that? That's great. We'll have it. And so we helped people in, in horn pain, and as well as we got together about helping them to get a hospital there, and that was years ago. <laughs> However, then we moved to Capriol, and uh, everything has been great. The yeah. people in Capriol are super. Yeah. Are very good people. Yes. Yeah. So there's a nice community it. that surrounds the train. Pardon? There's a nice community that surrounds the trains in right. general, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, most of them are like, they, they work in CN, if not. You know, some are retired, and they just stay in Capriol. You know, so we love it. <laughs> Terrific! Thank, thank you so yeah, much for doing you're this. You're welcome. Thanks. And now, as we sit just east of Horn Payne, Ontario, which is a lovely town, and from what I can tell, about ten people and uh, ten million black flies. Uh, oh. That was my impression of the uh, of the town. We have Runa Simpson and Mitch Gibson here from Aberdeen, Scotland. Welcome. Hi. Thank Pleased you. to meet you. So you're here on a bit of a, a roundabout trip. Uh, you didn't just come for the trains. So just to describe a little bit about what you've done before you got to uh, Vancouver. Uh, initially we uh, flew in from UK to uh, Las Vegas. I uh, spent two nights in Las Vegas, which was a, an interesting experience. <laughs> Didn't do any gambling. <laughs> uh, and then hired a car and did seven national parks and canyons. Um, Grand Canyon, Bryce, Zion, Death Valley, um, Monument Valley, absolutely out of this world, far more uh, diverse and unique than than we expected, mm -hmm. yes, so that was really interesting. The whole experience, the parks, and then moving through to San Francisco, which we also found very interesting, was a great experience, mm -hmm. the whole holiday. Now, how would you compare some of the sites then in the south through to, like, the Rockies? Because a lot of the, you know, externally it seems like it could be a lot of the same, a lot of rock faces and, and all this stuff. So, so how would you compare the, the Rockies to the south? Totally different, I'd say, altogether. I mean, coming from Scotland, we're used to the greenery and the mountains, mm. but they're on a far greater scale, and a very, very impressive scale as well. Yeah. Yes, and they cover a larger range than our than in our country as well. Um, although we have very similar sort of environments and, and locations and layouts, it, it, it is larger and it's. Um, I think it's very as it is the train winds its way through the mountains. Mm. It's, it's quite something quite sort of relaxing and quite unique about the whole whole experience. And the pictures are just wonderful. Mm, mm, yeah. Excellent pictures. And what was the draw to the train doing the cross country thing in, in Canada? What was the? Because I'm always curious as to, to why people, especially from abroad, want to do this trip. I think it was the ability initially of being able to cover Canada coast to coast mm -hmm. in such a short time. Right. And cover so much from Vancouver, mm -hmm. as you say, through the Rockies. Prairies mm -hmm. uh, and the initial and inevitably the, the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think it's sort of to capture, encapsulate how the, the diversity of, of the country and how the the layout and locations sort of diversify and change as you move across the country. Mm. So I, I use that as a sort of a base. So for hoping to return in the future mm. to explore areas. Mm. Uh, more fully in the future. Mm -hmm. And what have you noticed in, in this progression then as we have, we've moved east? From a train, uh, just a change of everything, you know, mm. change of people, change of culture, change of scenery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gone from the, the big rockies and the trees, so many trees, the flatlands, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and we're now back into tree country, mm -hmm. although different. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Northern Ontario, rocks and trees, it's... A Northern Ontario Shield. That's what yes, we got. Rocks and trees. Rocks and trees. <laughs> yeah. And has there been anything that's really stood out along the way? I think the train experience itself has been mm. 
amazing because I, I never expected so much um, for, from the train journey it, and it's been uh, we've met so many wonderful people from all over the world the staff have been excellent um, there's been entertainment the food has been superb uh, I can't fault the, the whole setup. Yeah, it's been quite an experience and mm. to spend four days on a train mm. you know mm. and go yeah. through it all has been quite exciting really mm-hmm. do you get the sense that you're doing something historic I think we first saw the train how the train uh, became used by this nation when we went to Alaska mm. and how it really got people up there and then when you come down to Canada you can see how it's transported people slowly east to west right mm-hmm. as the nations began to expand yeah, and what what, I, what struck me was the iconic aspect of the train because it's very it's, it was built in the the fifties initially and they've kept the tradition of of how it looks with all set up in the aluminium and mm. uh, and it's good that they haven't modernised it too much. Yeah, it's very which I feel is quite retro as well. Mm. And I think that's uh, that's added to the uniqueness of it. Yeah, I was saying to someone yesterday and. and Maybe even today, I can't remember. Days all mixed together now, but <laughs> the, I think they should promote the fact that there's no Wi Fi and that for a lot of the trip you're yeah. out of cell range. I like it. Yes. It's yes. Just yes. out of touch and just you're just here and it's it's really nice. Uh, and because you two, you watched the, uh, I noticed you watched the video yesterday yeah. in the yes. other car, but the, the history of the train. So was the, does that add something to the experience then, knowing, like seeing these shots from the 50s of you know, people in suits and ties getting on and and preparing for this journey, it, it, does that add something to the experience for you? It took, it took us back. Yeah. It took, well, it certainly took me back to you know earlier days, mm. and I could relate to it. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, it was quite an experience then, and it's an experience now. Yeah. 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 And you could see that for the for the people, the Canadian people themselves, it was quite an iconic sort of activity and a experience for them as well. Yeah. 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 And so once we get to Toronto. Uh, the rest of your plan is uh, what? What? Because you're you're heading further east now. I'm heading further east, and yes. doing four four cities. We're doing Montreal, Ottawa, Quebec, Quebec, yeah, uh, and then back to Montreal, I believe, and yeah. then flying out from there. Wow! So still a bit to go. Yes, but yeah. ten days to complete our journey, which has taken us six weeks. Yeah. Yes. So you'll be uh, when when time comes, you'll be excited to go home. I'm well, sure. Yeah. So yes. much to tell yes. people yes. and explain, but yet. As Rona was saying, you know, come back to. Yes. Right. We could come back to and expand on particular parts that we really, really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you had to, so if you had to, some, when you go home and people ask you, I, I think I've asked everybody this, you, you know, if you had to put in a, a word or a sentence, what would you say? Oh, um, that's just, it's just such a, a, a broad, wide based country with uh, so much diversity in it. Mm. Um, and it, it has something for everyone. Mm. Yeah, whether it's the big cities, whether it's the prairie lands, whether it's the Rockies, there's just you know it is. Two words: fantastic yeah. experience. Yes. Mm. Mm. I think that sums it up nicely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, terrific. So that's uh, Rona Simpson and Mitch Gibson from Aberdeen. Safe travels the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, and now we are here with Ken and Tammy Burgess from Vernon, British Columbia, traveling to Toronto to get to Stratford, Ontario to go to the Stratford Festival. Yes, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're most happy. You know, so you got on in uh, in Vancouver. That is true. And uh, we're traveling across the country. And, and why did you pick the train to, to go go east? It's something we've always talked about doing for the last 10 or 15 years. We've talked about it and just decided it was time to do it. So we did. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Tammy, you said, like me, that you don't like to fly. I definitely don't like to fly. I don't like to sit in one tiny little seat, cramped in, <laughs> squeezed to the point of immobility when you have to get out. <laughs> so, and now as we, we travel through northern Ontario here and we, we get closer to Toronto, um, just, you know, a chance maybe to reflect a little bit on the trip. What's it been like? I was saying to Ken earlier that it has more than lived up to my expectations of what I expected it to be. Part of it is we did have the smarts to uh, book a room that gave us some space and uh, 
and it's been everything we thought. We could sit here, enjoy the scenery, relax, and we have a little room to move, walk around. It's been wonderful, really. I don't have a lot to add to that. It's uh, we we uh, have seen some even the country we've driven through before. You get a different perspective of it, and uh, uh, we've really really enjoyed it. It's been wonderful. We've got what a couple more hours of daylight, and then we're yeah. asleep <laughs> until we get to where we're going. But uh, uh, it's been a wonderful experience. And, and for anyone who is curious, how exactly did you manage to get the room in the park car? Okay, well, part of the reason was I talked to um, uh, friends at the church, and they traveled, and they he, he refuses to fly of this couple, and so they took the train, which really got us started to talk. And I said to her, so how was it before, because we are going to finally do what we wanted to do. And she said, well... You don't want a room with an upper and lower berth because most of them are upper and lower. Mm -hmm. And just, well, I'm just not going to be climbing to an upper berth. And Ken would prefer not to. Sure. So when we went to the travel agent, who actually did not know anything, uh, I said, we want a room that has two lower berths. How do we do that? She had to phone via rail, and this is the only way to do it. Oh, okay. A room for three. It's a room for three, and we're just got the two lower berths we there's another one up there and uh they don't they don't set it up right. so we have two two lowers and uh during the day we got this nice couch yes it's beautiful in here. but the but the luck of the draw was that we got the park car because i gather there are other three rooms that are in other cars mm-hmm. there's only one per car right and uh and i mean you're going to pay for three yes. even though you're two right yes. but still it was worth every minute because we decided we weren't we weren't using it for transportation we were using it like a cruise right so this is like a cruise for us so it might as well be comfortable yeah. and enjoyable the experience out of it yes yeah. exactly yeah. now as as western living in the west uh, i'm curious if uh, you, your perception of the train may be different because i mean i living in ottawa i take the train a lot going between toronto Ottawa and Montreal, I have family in both Toronto and Montreal, mm-hmm. so the train for me is sort of more, more of a regular thing, yeah. um, especially for VIA, because the, the VIA only runs on the one route into, into Western Canada, so I, I'm wondering, what is the perception of the train in the West? Is it, is it seen uh, now as, like, like you were saying, a, a way to relax, sort of a vacation, or is it still seen as this really uh, vital part of Canada, a, an economic instrument to, to link the country together east-west? No, I would say every time I told someone I was taking the train, the first thing most people said to me was, isn't that awfully expensive? <laughs> that was the first thing they said, mm-hmm. because for us to travel like this, from it is more expensive than getting on a plane and flying. Yes. Absolutely, and it's certainly more expensive than a bus. Um, more comfortable, yes. Uh, so, so we had no illusions that we were using this for transportation. We right. were using it because we wanted the experience, so we wanted to travel. I don't think that people look on train travel in in Western Canada as uh, as transportation. Right. Um, it, it's as my wife said, it's more of a of a cruise experience. Uh, I'm well aware that in the east they'd have commuter sort of trains. commuter trains where in BC there is a one small commuter train in the lower mainland but but um, this particular type of train is is not normally looked on as as transportation as as the quickest and easiest way to get from A to B. Right. So in general though the trip like you just you it's love been it. wonderful. Yeah. It has been wonderful. We've uh, totally enjoyed it. Uh, we're now talking about maybe trying to work out a way to do it the other way so we <laughs> see the parts that we slept through. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a few years down the road. <laughs> well, enjoy yourselves in Stratford. Have, have a terrific time. Oh, that we are looking forward to. Yes, and, and thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Yeah. And finally, last person on the podcast, our train extravaganza, as we continue to travel somewhere in northern Ontario. 
Devin Andrews, Senior Service Attendant back here in the park car. How are you? Hi, I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for doing this. No problem. So this is your, you said, second year? Yep. Working on the train. Yep. Uh, going all over the place. Just what's that experience like? Um, it's interesting. Like, I definitely love it. Like, first season was great. I got to go all across Canada. So you get to see a variety of the countryside. You get to see all of the western part of Canada and then the eastern part so it's really interesting and the variety of people on board is mm-hmm. pretty intense too so that's fun. <laughs> yes we've seen it I've seen a couple of examples of that <laughs> in the past two days and we won't tell any stories but <laughs> it's, it's been it's been fun very interesting yeah yeah so do you, do you have a specific route that you prefer because you mentioned that you can go either because you're based in Winnipeg yeah so you can go either west or east from Winnipeg mm-hmm. or north if you're so inclined yep. to go north. Yep. Did, did you have a preferred route that you like? Preferred route? Um, well, they all have certain things that I like about them, but probably Vancouver. I like going western. Yeah. So you get a one-day layover, and then you get to see all of Vancouver. You get to mm-hmm. go climb mountains. You get to go to the beach. It has right. just a great variety of things to do there. So. Mm-hmm. so you actually have time to do that? I have time to do something, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whereas in Toronto, you... You're just in and out, right? It's Toronto's about eight hours if you're on schedule, so you right. get enough time to take a quick shower and have yeah. have a sleep there before you get back to work. Mm. And and so, what are your days like on the train? Because it's not like you can go home, <laughs> right? You're sort of stuck. Yep, you're definitely yeah. stuck on board. Um, the days are long, but they're fulfilled with like you have duties to fulfill throughout mm. the day. So in the morning, it's kind of it's more hectic depending on what job you have like mm-hmm. right now I'm in park car so it's like taking care of bedrooms and serving coffees and your alcohol beverages after 11 o'clock so it can get really busy back here but usually like the day plays out really well you talk to people your day goes by faster mm-hmm. and you have things to do always so mm-hmm. it goes by quick but they're they're long days yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything that you is there because we, we were talking earlier that there's you show up before the trip Mm-hmm. And you don't know exactly what you're going to be doing, so oh, it's yeah. you're sort of surprised. Oh, definitely. About like when we uh, we get a call 24 hours ahead of time, so within that 24 hours, you just know where your destination is, either Toronto, Vancouver, or Churchill, and then you go in, and about 10 minutes in there, you you choose a job on the spot, and then you're just put out there within half an hour, and then you do your job. But you're trained for all positions, so it's right. not like you need time to kind of really let that sink in and mm. figure it out but yeah that's about how that goes and in terms of just being on the train so much because i know like for me when when we stopped in jasper the first day like i got off and sort of walked around but i started feeling dizzy oh. just because <laughs> we got so used to the motion i guess I, yeah. like i don't know and and does that at all happen or, or do you get used to it i mean is it sort of like people who work on cruise ships talk about getting their sea legs yeah. same idea to get like your train legs yeah it definitely definitely happens uh more this year than last year and it's pretty much i'm standing all day so you're balancing with the train right and then when you get into a destination it's wobbly <laughs> yeah so, so you mentioned uh, meeting different people from, from all over the world really who come to do this trip is, is there any pressure on you as a service attendant to, to i mean build it up because i think a lot of people have this as this trip of a lifetime <laughs> idea i mean it, it, is that create a sense on you put more pressure on you to do your job in a certain way to, to fulfill these what could be maybe unrealistic expectations <laughs> for some folks yeah definitely a lot of people come from all over the world and they're expecting like really good performance good quality good food you know they spend a lot of money to come on board so you definitely want to live up to their expectations but you're limited with what you can do on here so definitely try to do the best you can and like even if they're angry or something you always try to accommodate or find an equilibrium that you can like balance out to make their trip better for them so usually that works out in a positive attitude and things kind of just go into place (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, it was, and just, what are your accommodations like on here? I know what mine are like. Um, um, do you guys get sort of stuffed <laughs> into the back closet and you just sort of... Yeah, we almost, camp out in the yeah. back there with yeah. our sleeping bags. That's what I figured. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. no sleeping beds for us. No. <laughs> we actually get um, roomettes. 
Mm-hmm. So we're in like bedrooms because we do work eighteen hours a day. Yeah. So we're entitled to like some sort of bed. We'll, sometimes we're in bursts. Sometimes we're in uh, roomettes. And if we're lucky, we get a bedroom if the rooms mm. aren't full. But right. it depends on the work count on the trains. So. Right. Yep. Yeah. And and I will say that to me at least one of the hardest parts of the job would be having to wear a tie for eighteen hours a day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't. I couldn't do that. that would yeah. Be, that would be difficult. No, it's cool. I think it's cool that, uh, you know, even though you can do this, you still sort of enjoy the, the yeah. process of it. Cause it's, it's definitely, like, something that you can look back on in your life and be like, yeah. I got to do this, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't regret it. Right. Yeah. And e- even though if you have to be based out of Winnipeg for it. Yeah, even oh, though... Oh, slam on Winnipeg. <laughs> yes. No, Winnipeg's a lovely city. Yeah, it's nice. I love it in the summer. Winters are way colder than I was expecting, <laughs> but... Yeah, because you move you move from Quebec, you said, right? I did, yeah. yeah. I moved from Quebec, so it's a big change. <laughs> yeah, those prairie winters, if you're not ready for them, they yeah, can... Yeah, uh, definitely cut me off guard. <laughs> 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 All right, terrific. So that's Devin Andrews, Senior Service Attendant, here on The Canadian. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. So there you have it. Bit of an inside look into what it's like to take the train across this country and 12 different perspectives on train travel and the meaning of the train in Canadian history. So my thanks to Robin Lambert. Be sure to check out his work, robinlambert.ca, and you can also find him at the Alberta College of Art and Design, Joshua Smith, and be sure to check out his work at joshuasmithtunes.com. He's got a really good sound, uh, so be sure to check that out. Sally and Ed Williford, Chris Collis, uh, and you can check his stuff out at ttng.net. And actually, the band is coming back to North America through the fall they got some shows in western canada in october eastern canada in november and a bunch of shows in the united states so be sure to check them out lillian cargill gay casey rona simpson and mitch gibson ken and tammy burgess and devin andrews my thanks to everyone if you have any questions comments for the podcast history slam gmail.com twitter at dr shawnee fever and as always if you're out and you see enrico palazzo please say hi for me Thanks for listening to the History Slam podcast. Be sure to check out Active History for more features, articles, and be sure to subscribe on iTunes.